I am inevitable. Here's your look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Avengers Endgame Iron Man Mark 85 and Thanos. Iron Man steps onto the battlefield against Thanos in the ultimate fight for the fate of the universe. Thanos grew into a destructive force that will stop at nothing to achieve his goals. Before we get a closer look at the Iron Man Mark 85 and Thanos, let me first, if I can, send a thank you out to the folks over at Hasbro who made this review possible by sending this set over my way. If you guys are interested in picking up the Iron Man Mark 85 and you're interested in picking up Thanos, first of all, you're in luck, as the set does contain both the figures. But they're also available right now, right now, in retail stores and online. I figure before we actually look at the figures, we'll just run through the accessories that come included with them. There's a lot to cover off, but I'm sure I'll get through it in a snap. I'm here all day. Starting first, Iron Man Mark 85 comes included with a shield. The shield does look really cool. It's all been done here using translucent blue plastic. You can, in fact, probably even see yeah, my hand waving behind it. Flip it around to the back. It does actually have a clip that I guess if you wanted to, you could, if you have providing small enough fingers, you can give your, your little tiny finger a, a protective shield. Or you can also clip it onto the side of the Iron Man Mark 85. Find the arm that's best suited for you, at least for the purpose you're displaying, and just clamps onto the side of his arm like that. You kind of have to have it, though, further up the arm. If you have it too far down, the shield sits sort of loose. That seems to be about the sweet spot, about three quarters of the way up. And you give himself the protective shield, which I guess actually could be going the opposite way. Let's just detach this. Now it doesn't seem to want to free itself. There we go. Flip it around, and you can also snap it on that way as well. I think I did actually have it the right way the first time. Let's do and fix that problem. Again, snapping onto the side of his arm. About, again, mid-arm, a little further up is probably the best place to put it. And again, you've got yourself a little shield that he can be displayed along with. I like the fact that he comes included with it. Again, we'll just put that to the side. The figure also comes included. Now, I do have, first of all, some issues with the figure standing. I, we'll talk more about that in a second. I have to kind of keep doing this. So if it seems like throughout the course of this review, I just keep doing this. That's the reasoning why. The figure, like I said, at times does have some balancing issues. But again, you could use a display stand, I suppose, if you wanted to. The figure also comes included with an energy blade. The energy blade seems to be using the same type of blue plastic as the shield. That would be a good time to bring the shield back in. Of course, they have also gone in there and painted in the handled area as well as the under section of, well, just below the energy blades themselves. Now, the figure can hold it right now. He does have defaulted gripping hands, so you're already in luck. The figure also does have closed fists, and the figure also does have repulsor hands. We'll talk more about that in a second. The thing about it, though, is that this hand is already sculpted for the snap. You can see he's already acquired the Infinity Stones, and they're attached, molded now to the side of the arm for the Mark 85. And yeah, he already does have the snap. So you really are, unfortunately, only able to really display it on this hand. I guess you could still attach it to the snap hand, but it's going to look a little out of place. Pry the fingers away from the palm, and while that's doing that, you can go ahead and fit the blade in there. The thing about the blade, though, you can already see, you can sort of have to put it on in on an angle. Because you have to kind of get it around his thumb. His pesky thumb seems to be the thing that's getting in the way of stuff. There we go and just attach it to his hand. You can kind of see already how close his hand is to that. Very, very tight quarters, but he does have the means to hold that as well. Again, if you wanted to take this off, you can put it into this hand, but like I said, because the hand is already in a snap position, it's gonna look a little strange and out of place, the fact he's gonna be holding the energy blade on that side. That being said, I'm gonna put that down. Again, grab, just put the figure down here for a second. Look at the rest of his accessories. Comes with a couple of repulsor hands. You are very observant. Yes, he does have holes in his palms. The reasoning for that, he also comes included with these blast effects. The blast effects attach inside the hole of the hand, and it gives him the look like he's got the repulsor blast. You can actually duplicate that by doing the exact same thing on the other hand as well. And again, that just fits into the hole like so. So he does have both. If you wanted to see what that looked like, by the way, you can go ahead and grab the forearm. Just remove carefully the hand from that. Find the appropriate hand. Thumbsies, of course, go in. I'm just going to attach that into the forearm socket. 
And then we can go ahead and attach the blast effect back in. It's not so much even a blast effect. It's more so like the repulsor blast. But again, that fits just into his hand. And he got, it almost looks like he's trying to knock on somebody's door. Hello, who's there? It's Iron Man. I'm selling knives. I guess Iron Man wouldn't really sell knives. But he does have the repulsor blast effect if you want to do that and display the figure with it. Like that. The figure also does have closed fists. I mean, really, for all the things he comes included with, closed fists would probably be the last thing I would want to display with the figure because it means he has to forfeit, unfortunately, being able to hold one of the weapons. But he does come include, couple, included with a couple of closed fists as well. Getting a closer look at the head sculpt first before we start switching things out. Classic looking Mark 85 helmet. The incorporating of the gold does work well to match the colors of the gold on the sides of the arms. The additional black certainly does go a long way just to kind of break up a lot of it because it's so much of that molded red plastic. There's a little bit of the marbling. You can probably already see a little bit of it on the torso. You see, it seems more of it as we get a little bit further down on the on the boots there. A little bit more of the molding. It's, it's very little, very little marbling. It's not to the what you would normally get with like silver or gold. By the way, it seems like the, sil the silver, what little there is of it, just on the side of his head, for example, I guess kind of more of a closer, darker black. The gold also is something that's both been painted onto the plastic. The plastic is the red color, and then they've just painted the gold over top of it. So that's why the gold doesn't have as much of that marbling. It certainly is very clean. I have to say, to the credit of Hasbro, they actually did a pretty good job of painting on the gold. Now, if you did want to display your Iron Man Mark 85 with the alternate Tony Stark head sculpt, you can do that. They actually do give you two different head sculpts. We're going to go ahead and yank off the first one. Just unplug it like that. And when you are removing it, don't be alarmed the fact the whole neck goes along with it. You really want that to happen because you want to be able to have the collar piece then visible when you pop in the Tony Stark head sculpt. Now, this is one of two. I'm keeping the other one for not so much a surprise because I'm sure you already know the direction it's going to go. It's a pretty good likeness, I have to say, to Robert Downey Jr. Pretty good, actually, on their part. Speaking of part, the part is nice on the head sculpt. How's that for a segue? And the hair is actually sculpted pretty good too. I don't think I have really any complaints when it comes to the head sculpt. It's pretty good, actually. It is probably one of the better movie Iron Man figures we've actually gotten. Now, he does also have the battle damaged look, which does work then to the snap. The thing about it, though, is if you are looking, say, to display this head sculpt with Tony Stark, then... Unfortunately, one continuity error that you're going to be facing is the fact that his armor isn't badly damaged. It looks just as clean like he just put it on in the morning, and it doesn't have any of the damage. I guess they probably could have done a damaged suit for this to go then well with the Thanos, because Thanos clearly has battle damage in his, har in his armor. But if you did want to... By the way, the head sculpt does have articulation, just in case you are curious. It's not relegated to just, just doing being a stump, popping in with the neck, and there's no articulation. It actually does have quite a bit quite a bit of articulation. But if you did want to change the head sculpt out, be careful that you don't remove the head and leave the neck behind and then go ahead and replace it. These heads are so super easy to change. You got this one instead. And just to quickly show you the difference between the two. Preference more so than anything else. Again, the only continuity issue is just the fact that his armor would be still pretty clean. And then of course you can get that classic look that final look, I am Iron Man. And then he snaps. Of course, he's got the Infinity Stones lodged into the side of his armor. That's going to be certainly helpful as well. Great looking figure. I mean, again, the only thing I would have said for this set is that the Iron Man Mark 85 suit is a little too clean, especially if you're going to go with this head sculpt. But if you really just decide to display the head sculpt or the figure with the other two heads, then it's not a problem at all. It's actually a good looking suit. Looking at the articulation now, we'll keep with this head sculpt for now. The head rotates all the way around. And that's the same actually on all three. Moves up, moves down, and you can also rock it back and forth as well. Shoulders come out comfortably, comfortably at a 90 degree angle bend. Spin it around so you can see it from the back. And of course those arms rotate all the way around. He has the swivel in the bicep. The figure has a double hinge on the elbow. And the figure does also have a swivel in the hands, whatever hands you decide to display him with. Upper torso ball joint gets afforded for this figure. You can already see as well that the lower torso, like the abdomen area of his suit, doesn't have any additional posability. That's okay. I don't feel like I'm disappointed the fact it doesn't have it. Legs split out what seems to be a ball joint on the inside there. The legs go forward. The legs go back. There's a bit of a stopping point 
of course, where it's going to hit the back of his behind. The figure has three quarters of the way up the thigh, a swivel cut. He does have a double hinge on the knee. And then when it comes to his feet, they move up and down and back and forth this way. Now, again, like when it comes to these feet, I have some difficulty just trying to get the feet leveled right in order the figure so that the figure isn't going to be falling over. Knock on wood, actually, the figure has been pretty good, although now I've probably jinxed it by saying it. And like I said, I probably will utilize a display stand. Again, I don't know what it is about the ankles, but the ankles just seem to want to almost push the figure forward. Like I can't make him flush. Like I keep trying to do this just to balance things off so I, I don't have the figure falling over. But again, I'm probably going to just make use of a display stand. That's Tony Stark. Let's move our attention now over to Thanos. <laughs> And Tony Stark, of course, falls just to the end of that cut. Let's move our attention, though, over to Thanos, and we'll have a look at the accessories that come included with the figure. First of all, he gets himself the double-sided sword. I love the look of this sword. That too big, of course, to fit into a room, but if they could come up with like a one-to-one -one scale of this. Imagine that sitting on your wall. It does have actually some pretty nice detailing done to the blades themselves. And the actual hilt with guards on both sides have been sculpted what looks to be gold plastic. And I'm guessing they probably have painted in the blades rather than the opposite, opposite around, you know, molding silver and painting the gold. Okay. Okay, good. You guys were following along. This can be held in his hand. Although when you're looking at the hands, he really only has one for the job. This hand right here, just widen the fingers away from the palm and then get the double-sided sword in there. I'm probably going to be displaying Thanos, I think, with the double size sword. I just kind of like the look of it. The other hand, unfortunately, does have the nano gauntlet. Now, the one right now, I've got the hand in there is a close fist. So already, he can't even hold the double-sided sword. If he does want to give the option, uh, if you want the option, that is, he does also have the snap. You know, an interesting touch of detail I appreciate that they did. The snapped hand actually has the removed Infinity Stones. Because, I mean, easily, they, as you can see, like the closed fist, closed fist has the infinity stones. The about to snap and destroy the galaxy hand doesn't actually have it. Nice little touch on their part. And, it, of course, if you want to change the hands out, go ahead and just remove the hand from at least the other part of the gauntlet. The gauntlet, by the way, isn't removable. So if you think that you can take it off, I guess you could try to pry it off. But then we don't really have a hand to put in there in its place anyways. Then from there, we're going to go ahead and put in the snapped hand. And again, if you wanted to, you can display Thanos with the snapped hand, although you will want to change the head sculpt off. Speaking of head sculpt, how's that? I guess it's not so much a clever segue. Talking about the head sculpts now. He does come with a couple of these. We're going to grab these one at a time. Starting first, he does come with a helmeted head sculpt, which actually is a fine looking portrait of Thanos. Grimace looking teeth. Uh, the one eye here seems like it's a little off. I think it's my own eyes actually playing tricks on me. He's got definitely more squinted eyes. The teeth almost look like he's also got braces. Is it just me, or does it kind of look like he's got braces? It could be just the way that teeth were painted. But if you do want to change out the head sculpt, he also comes with this head sculpt. Just a neutral expression more than anything else. We can go ahead and just yank the head off. And it removes pretty easy, actually, on the ball joint. Go ahead and just replace it with the head that we want to use. A little bit of pressure is required to put that in place. And again, you've got yourself a very proud of himself Thanos. If you want to go with, say, a, a less than smiling Thanos, he also comes with this head sculpt too. Which is not that much different, really. The eyes seem slightly... I guess it's more the eyebrows than anything else. And it's certainly the mouth. It's not smiling on this one. It's smiling on this one here. And then if you want to go with the post-snap... He also has the degrading dust face. That's not the correct term, but the term we're going to go with. He does also have that as well. And if you do want to change that, again, you already know the drill by now. Pop that off the ball joint. Replace the head. There we go. And you've got this head sculpt as well. Which works, you know, if, if you do like this particular look of Thanos on your shelf. I think for myself specifically, I probably will either display him with this head sculpt, the one that's got the helmet on his head, or I'll probably display it with just the neutral. Maybe what we'll do is we'll stick with the neutral for now. Just one last look. You can see the difference between the two. Really cool looking sculpt that they've sculpted to the side of his face. Along the top there as well. Dark, dark charcoal paint. Looks really good on Thanos. Anyways, we're going to pop this off for the time being. We're going to put 
on what I just feel is a good, good neutral head sculpt. We're going to look for the rest of the figures review, pop that in place. All right. So looking at his armor here, this is armored Thanos. So of course he brings in the gold armor and unlike the Mark 85, there's actually considerable damage that's been done to his armor. I'm going to spin this around so you can see it front and the back. And while damaged, I do think that Hasbro has done a pretty good job of actually sculpting in the damaged looking suit. It, it does have like bent in little creases and dents and indentations to it. It looks actually really good. And of course, like this one, being the fact he does have the armor, he only has the armor on the one side for the gauntlet. And then the other side, he actually does have the nano gauntlet, which we already looked at. His lower skirt is softer plastic. It's softer plastic also on the sides and also on the back. That helps a lot, actually, when it comes to the figure's articulation, which we'll talk more about just in a split second. Looking at his quick boots, very large size feet, but like Iron Man Mark 85, he does have peggles on the undersides. So if you want to make use of a display stand, by all means, you can certainly do that. I might even, I, I, I might do that for Iron Man just because he does have some difficulty standing. Thanos, not so much. He actually does do a pretty good job of actually standing. Now looking at the figure's articulation, though, because it is on a ball joint, I'm going to make sure, first of all, I got it on firm enough. There we go. So it can actually survive the articulation test. So for the head being on the ball joint, you can already see that there's a hinge joint right there. So the head already can look all the way around, sitting on that ball joint after all. Um, you can also rock it back and forth this way as well. But he does also have that hinge joint in the neck. So it allows the head to shift forward and shift up. Just making sure the head's completely on there. For the arms... It's going to be a little bit more limited. This one gets afforded a little more wiggle space than this one, just because it does have the shoulder at the top there. See, that's going to prevent a little bit of it being able to... So while this one only gets to about a 45, this one almost gets almost to a 90 degrees. You could even argue the point that it's 90 degree angle bend right there. The arm rotates all the way around on this side fine. At least the top of the, uh, the armor here is a softer plastic. This one here, it's kind of the same idea. You're just going to have to struggle a little bit more to do it. The arms do swivel down below here. Single hinge on the elbow, but as you can already see, the length of the joint, you get actually a full 90 degree angle bend on the elbow. Hands rotate all the way around, providing you can actually get underneath the armor there on his gauntlet. The figure has an upper torso crunch, so you can move that back and forth this way. He doesn't actually have articulation other than that. I thought there may have been a swivel joint, but I'm guessing they probably decided to leave it out simply because it would just break up the sculpting of his lower skirt. Legs split out, and you can already see how that softer plastic of the skirting does help to that. You can bring the legs forward and back. Has a swivel at the top, about halfway up the thigh, there's a swivel cut there. Figure has double hinge on the knee, double hinge on the knee. And then when it comes to his feet, the feet move up and down, and you can also ankle pivot them as well. So Thanos is actually pretty articulated for being such an oversized figure like this. You know, now, honestly, I'm a little more torn as to how I really want to display Thanos. Initially, so confidently walking into this review, I thought I was just going to display him armored with the helmet on and the double-sided blade. But in actual fact, I kind of think I like to display him more with the snap hand, the big smile on his face, and realizing quickly he no longer had the Infinity Stones in his possession. Rather, instead, they were transferred over to Iron Man, who unfortunately now is sitting down because, like I said earlier in this review, the figure has a little more difficult time standing. I'm thinking I'm probably going to use a display stand to fix that problem. Pretty nice looking figures of both Iron Man Mark 85 and Thanos. And the beauty of getting a set like this is that not only are you getting both the figures, but you're getting a ton of accessories. Notably, yes, Iron Man Mark 85 suffers a bit because simply his armor isn't as shiny as that at the very end of the movie when he does have the snap. Still, though, I can understand why Hasbro would have just included a stock 85 body because, of course, you can display him non-battle damaged Tony Stark face or, if you wanted to, just revert it back to the helmet of the Mark 85. That's probably one of the reasons why they didn't lock it in place, giving you a battle damaged body just because then you could use it for other purposes. Thanos, though, goes full damaged look, and that doesn't bother me at all. First of all, you can display Thanos as either in his ready to attack the Avengers with his army with helmet on his head. Or you can also display him with a snap surprised look on his face as he's trying to destroy the galaxy and Iron Man's beaten him to the punch. He's already stolen the stones. 
A big thank you, though, to the folks over at Hasbro that provided this Marvel Legends box set of both the Iron Man Mark 85 and Thanos. A great looking release. What do you guys think of these figures? Let me know down below in the comments section. And if you guys are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content you're seeing, hit that subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on. It all helps towards the channel. And keep your peepers peeled because there will be more Marvel Legends reviews lined up and coming your way. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.